All right, guys, so we're going to talk about circle topo real quick because you've seen videos on YouTube probably saying that you want to use quads and grid fill, uh, circle cap or cylinder, whatever the case. And a lot of times that's true if you're working with subdivision. But these other topos are actually acceptable as well, but there's kind of different reasons why you might use them. So uh, we'll start with, um, let's just move these down real quick. We'll start with creating some circles and shift A, create a circle here, and we'll just use 32 side for this one. Now you'll notice there's a fill type here. We can actually do an ingon fill, or we could do a triangle fan, or keep it with nothing. And so I'm gonna show you how to create these all real quick. I'm just gonna duplicate by hitting Shift D and pulling it around uh, like so. Now uh, the main thing is that if you have edges like this, you go into edit mode, you press F, you can fill it. You can create the ingon one really quick. Alt Q to this one, A F. All right. So, but this one we're gonna turn into tri fan. Easiest way is just to inset hitting I. Do something like that and merge at center. Boom. You got a triangle fan like that if you wanted to. Now, uh, this one over here is a little bit more interesting. So what's going on here? Like, why why would you ever use... This is actually best for, like, low-poly game models a lot of times. It's not the only way of doing it, but it is going to give you generally the lowest triangle count opposed to doing it one other way, which I'll show you in a sec. But um, so you have an ingon, right? And if you triangulate this thing, you hit Control t uh, a lot of times it's going to come in with beauty and beauty. Now, the problem with this is you can see the topo may be slightly different on this one. Actually, it's the same. Okay. A lot of times it ends up slightly different. So there's a little trick to this. When you hit control T, you don't use beauty. You use shortest diagonal a lot of times or clip right here, sometimes both. And you'll get kind of the same topo now. All right. And the reason this works out like this is when we're doing LOD models later on, you'll notice that every other vertex, it's kind of in the middle there. You can control X and dissolve those, right? So later on, when you're doing every other vertex, you see how that works out. So this actually works kind of good because the, the way it's laid out, um, it actually doesn't distort the UVs very bad. If you had it UV mapped, it creates better LOD models. So this is actually one of the reasons you might end up using um, this particular topo, right? And now you'll notice that if you compare it to the triangle fan, uh, we got 32 triangles and this one is going to be 30, right? And we'll get to the other one later. Now, Triangle fan, what is this good for? Well, a lot of times I'm working on a mesh. Let me use a plane real quick and do a couple loop cuts, maybe uh, four or five of these. Let's do four. All right, and we get it going like so. I'm gonna go ahead and grab here, control number pad plus, select more, right click. I'm gonna use the loop tools add on and click circle. Boom, just like that. And you can see it comes in something like this, which is a little bit irregular, but um, we'll shift it a bit. There you go. Now, uh, here's the thing. When you're using the grid fill setup like this, right? Uh, if you loop cut, you go all the way through it. So whenever you're working on an object, sometimes this gets a little bit annoying doing this, right? Like you're working on the top of a cylinder, you want to loop cut down here and it goes up to the top and it runs all the way across the model. And if you have your model um, starting to get enclosed anyways, where it's a manifold mesh or it loops all the way back around, you can start creating spirals and other stuff through here very easily, or your topo might redirect later on. So you might have an edge go through here and then later on it comes back and goes through the, another section over here later on not always the case right like you don't always want that right control exit you can dissolve it you can use the ingon you'll see when we loop cut now it works fine so a lot of times you'll see in my videos i'm using either ingons or triangle fans like this while working and then later on if i want to convert these from one to the other it's very easy you select it all uh, select by face and then control x you can dissolve it to an ingon control t it if you want to go ahead and set up the um Clipping setup there, the triangulated setup. Or if you want to grid fill it, just delete it. Grab the edge loop, control F, and you can grid fill it. All right, so that's all the different ways you can get through these. It's not really that challenging. Um, the thing here, though, is the grid fill, right? Which is basically what we're going to do over here is the grid fill. So you grab a loop, or you grab the uh, edges, control F, grid fill, boom. And you get that. But here's a trick, right? Control F, grid fill. Sometimes you want to change the offset. You can also change the span amount too. So you can get different kind of topologies here if you need to. Um, eight was okay in our case and offset of four seems to work well. You can also try simple blending, which gives you a little bit of a different result. A lot of times it could be quite useful on irregular shapes and things like that. Now, uh, it's not just for uh, circles, obviously, right? Okay, so very easy to kind of get this set up and going like this. Nothing too crazy uh, as far as that's concerned. But uh, the grid fill is going to be, of course, uh, it's going to work better with subdivision, basically. So if I grab through here, select loops, um, boundary loop, control B, mouse wheel up, change profile to one, 
and you can see that we're going to have that. So when that subdivides, that's going to work really well. Whereas like if you have um, a pole in the middle, it's still going to work technically, but it actually can, you could, this could show up in baking, high to low baking. So just be careful with that. It does create an e-pole that looks something like that. It's rather nasty. Um, but we can also do, of course, um, the triangulation trick, but obviously when you're subdividing, that's not necessarily a good thing, unless you're looking for a, kind of a topology pattern like that. You can see if you turn optimal display off, this is how you can generate some really irregular stuff where you have a lot of just kind of um, interesting topo going. Sometimes this is fun to use to model off of. Um, you can't do that, but it definitely can also cause problems. So you got to be careful when you're doing things like that. Um, right, so... Um, let's go back to this one here real quick. This topology is usually useful for, well, what I've already shown where you can just end an edge loop into it, but it's also really useful for doing certain types of modeling, right? So if you take note, there's the pole in the middle, right? And everything kind of converges to it. So certain shapes like a UV sphere, you will see is the equivalent of that at the very top. Everything's rounded out down here, of course, but at the very top, we get the pole with the edges. It's basically the same thing, right? So um, this could be quite useful in some situations where maybe you want to uh, go through and grab like one edge. You can actually alt shift click on an edge and select a ring, select loops or select and go check or deselect. Now do select loops and edge loops. You'll get something like this. So if I was to Alt-Z, press C, use the mouse cursor, and I can middle click here, right click to get out of it, we can get a, something like this going perhaps. And if I want to Alt-S these out, that's a possibility, or I can S-Shift-Z them out as well. So when you're doing things like pumpkins or hot air balloons or other various types of things, you might need a model. Uh, super useful topo to have, um, even though it's just a, it's a UV sphere, obviously. But it's, the cap could like this could be uh, potentially useful to you in some situations. It, let's say you're doing like a hand grenade, for example. Um, you know, you might loop tools this out, circle it, exit, delete it. And then you might just actually grab that and work off of it, basically. So you can see how that works out. Maybe you're making a pumpkin or something, right? And you could subdivide it later on, as long as this is going to cap correctly, which F, inset, inset, merge at center for now. Turn this off in edit mode. And then maybe we do some loop cuts in there you can see maybe we can start making a pumpkin or something now don't don't take for granted we have sculpt mode too so if you ever tab into or control tab into sculpt mode you can do that and you can use things like snake hook and whatnot on your models as well you can see we can do some fun stuff with the other um, these are modeling tools they're not just sculpting they're modeling tools guys and you can do kind of fun stuff with this and contort and shift quads around very easily with that uh, but you know the, the top here just won't work out maybe so this is how you need, you know, being able to switch between them. You can grid fill this maybe if you need to. You see how that works out? And maybe it doesn't quite line up the way you want, so you shift it around. And so it's very useful to get used to using all of these, right? For optim optimization purposes, perhaps, during modeling, uh, to finish it out with a subdivision mesh, uh, quite useful. And so you can make things really fast sometimes and get it going just right. Not a big deal. Um, and you can also do other weird things like let's say we go in here and delete this uh, let's say we grid fill this now you see how we get kind of an irregular pattern here not the end of the world we can maybe use simple blending it makes it a little nicer you see um, tilted key or excuse me tab key control tab sculpt mode we have slide relax down here we can shift things around like this it tries to preserve the volume um, but if we hold shift it does just kind of like a regular relax which is nice um, we can do that, but we can also do uh, like mesh filter and we can relax here as well, right? So uh, it's already set to relax. Let's do it. So if I click and drag to the right a little bit, everything should relax a little. It tries to preserve volume, but it's not going to keep your model perfect. And you see it's melting here at the top almost, right? The way it's working out and that pole's getting a little bit crazy. Um, but it does work to some degree. And if you ever want to like isolate something, obviously, you can always do that. You could use like the uh, the masking tool isolate here press a invert and then um maybe go back and use mesh filter relax and just do this area you see so then you can a clear it boom and so useful for modeling um useful to switch between them also and then later on you know if you need to optimize something like this maybe you create it um something like this maybe duplicate it first and convert it to a mesh uh get it going like that and then you try something like a decimate 
and you decimate this thing down a little bit, you know, you might get some really weird, interesting looking topo here, but believe it or not, you can actually use this a lot of times and uh, get something going like that. As long as you're preserving the, uh, the silhouette, a lot of times it's okay. And you can see it's not too bad. And you know, a lot of people do use game models like this as well. Um, they just take it down to a point where it makes the most sense. And I don't know if 2000 triangles there makes a whole lot of sense. So, you know, however low you got to go, basically. Uh, maybe a little bit less than that. Yeah, so you see profile, not too bad. Maybe shade it smooth. Some of these are looking a little bit squirrely, so you will have to do a little bit of manual cleanup, perhaps. Uh, let's take it a little higher. Let's do the 0.05. It was like a 1,000. Okay, so we still might have to clean it up a bit. Uh, but if we were ever going to create LOD models later on, let's say we UV map this and unwrap it and all that. We actually uh, could do that on this and then decimate it. Decimation will try to preserve um, the UV maps, but it doesn't always keep them perfect. But you can also try like data transferring UVs to this one, which is actually kind of interesting. Uh, but eventually you can take these all down. You can create LOD models if you needed to until you get to like a really low level. And as things go uh, further away into the scene, you can make them really simplistic. So, I mean, we're talking 126 faces at that level. Um, you know, we could just even go further if we wanted to. Let's see if we can bust it down to oh, two zeros, 74. From way back here, you wouldn't be able to tell, right? So in your game environment, that's what you would probably end up doing. Something similar to that. And um, yeah, so I mean, in reality, you know, this is supposed to be just about circle topo, but it, it works into other topo too. And that's, that's the main thing. Like this one, eventually, you know, you can use this for like nose cones as well. So for example, if you're trying to model a nose cone, okay, and you do something like this and you bevel this area, mouse wheel it up a lot, and then change your profile back to 0.5, you know, like we can get a nose cone like this going. I don't know what just happened there though. Let's AM merge it by distance real quick. Try that again. There's a vertex there. Oh, there's a vertex there. All right. I did not know that. All right. Now let's try it again. So you're doing like an artillery round or something like that, maybe. Um, this could be useful. Maybe it works out for you. Shade it smooth. Or shade auto smooth in our case, I think. No, we can shade it smooth. It's fine. All right. Yeah, see, something like that could potentially work out. But the cap's a little bit sharp. It's a little bit pointy. And if you ever try to like bevel this and change it and stuff, it gets a little bit squirrely, right? Like it's okay, but it's not okay at the same time. Control B and V, you can't really use that maybe. This is one of the issues you might run into. So we don't really need this one in this case because we're going to convert this. Um, if we did like um, a fill or Control F and grid fill, you can see we get something like this going now. Uh, let's select this whole area. Shift H. Okay. We're going to hide all that. and then. Maybe even this outer one here we can hide. So we'll do this. Shift H again, right there. Let's use proportional edit. Set it to uh, serial or smooth, it's really up to you. And then um, mouse wheel up and down to get this result going here like this. And in our case, actually smooth, I think is the one we need, all right? And we wanna do the center vertex. There we go, that's what we're looking for. So doing this like, as the exact top of this is probably your better bet because you're going to get a pole no matter what you do, right? Like right here. And sometimes those are fairly noticeable um, on the shading and the geometry. Uh, but this could work out really well for you as opposed to doing just the uh, triangle fan, right? So this, this is why it's important to understand how you can go back and forth between them and understand the sculpting aspect and proportional editing. It all kind of plays together and it works out. Um, and for subdivision, this one's going to actually work better too. So if we subdivide it, control one through five, you see it works out pretty well, but we, that pole does sometimes cause a little bit of issues in there. And so it's a little bit tricky. Um, we could try, if you want, maybe that you can get away with this sometimes. Control shift clicking through here, control number pad plus. Maybe we do this a little bit. You could try like control V and smoothing vertices and you can bump the repeat amount up a little bit. You might get a little bit of a better result doing that. That's gonna make these poles go a little bit crazy though. Um, sometimes and if you ever run into this issue where they kind of look a little bit off you might be able to get away with control v and smoothing vertices laplation 
What that's going to do is flatten that one in the middle. Boom. Just a little bit, all right? And sometimes that actually makes it look a lot nicer than uh, the other ones would be. So there's a little bit of uh, tweaking involved with this. It's really hard to get it right sometimes, but that's a couple solid techniques there to, to get through it anyways. And so overall, I mean, that's it, guys. That's all you got to do to kind of... Um, like, that's really all you need to know about this topology, right? And some of the ways and some of the things you can do to work it out and transfer back and forth between them, work them into your models and different modeling techniques and all that, right? So it's, um, all of them are useful. Every one of them, even this one. Anyways, um, oh, one last thing. I didn't, I didn't show it, but we're going to do, I'm delete only faces. No, we'll control X at first. Okay. And then we'll delete only faces. When we do a grid fill like this, right? You know, we're getting that kind of pattern there, right? And then, but if you drop the span to zero, we get this kind of pattern going. You can also knife tool this in or join vertices together. Um, but you can see, like, it doesn't quite line up and down perfectly this way. It might do better the other way. And if it doesn't, sometimes it's just like one segment might help it. Uh, but for simplicity's sake here, let's leave it at one. And we'll just get it about right. There's also a trick to this one. If you rotate it slightly like this, boom. You can hold control while rotating, do like five degrees. It should work out here on the 32-sided one. Uh, it still might be a little bit off, though. Nonetheless, we got it here, right? So check out the triangle count here, 30. Okay, so this is actually as efficient as this one, but it, the layout of this doesn't let it break down as easily. That's the main thing. This one will break down as an LOD a little bit better, I think. Also, if you ever see somebody doing this number, uh, these will actually, they'll, pretty, they'll be pretty rough on your UV maps when you try to start decimating something like this or creating an LOD model. So be careful with this top, but don't do that. Um, and except for in certain situations, like all of this kind of works into other models later on. So you're making some kind of like design like this and then, but you're going to bevel all these vertices maybe. So control B and V and you do something like this, right? Um, sometimes you'll see this happen quite a bit, which I don't think is the end of the world if it happens, but you'll see that someone will triangulate that like that. That's kind of a good thing. That's really pretty much all you could do there. Um, it's not like we can get away with much, much more than that, really. So, like, if we try doing a join here to here, it doesn't really make any sense, right? So, there are going to be times you still do something very similar to what I was just saying. You know, you don't do, but um, it's a possibility that you do that. Optimization is a whole nother ball field that uh, we should probably do in another video, I think. But there is definitely ways to create um, extremely optimized models sometimes. And usually like long runs of triangles is a bad idea. So something like this might actually work out pretty good. It just depends on what you're doing. Like if you had center edges, you know, like it could work maybe, you know, something like that. But it's a little bit, they're a little bit lengthy now. So it may or may not work out too well. You can see that just isn't needed. So, you know, you're working back out. But like merging something like this to here, mm. I don't know about that. It, it might be okay in some cases, but I think I'd rather go with something like that. Right? Right there. Something like that, maybe. Anyways, and that's going to give you whatever amount of uh, triangles you end up with. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, in all, don't be afraid of topo. Experiment, play around with it. Check your triangle counts and everything. Um, vertice counts, triangle counts. Turn statistics on right here to always see that. So whenever you select an object, it's going to update. If you have multiples selected, it'll do all of them. But you'll be able to check them and kind of analyze what's going on as you're working. And that's it, guys. So that's uh, Circle Topo. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check you out in the next one, all right? Take care.